What's good, people? It's your boy Brocky, man. Whiskey and Kicks. It's another sipping with Brocky second, man. We back at it. I'm here with my man Sonny Singh, right? What's going on, bro? Sonny Singh from the back of the house.com. What's going on with you, brother? Chilling with it, man. I got a couple uh my favorites surrounding me. Um Wednesday night. Yeah. Than any other night to try something. I had a sweet too, so I brought out some of my sweet stuff. Okay, we're gonna talk about it in a couple of seconds, man. But just let's let's get the people caught up and, and let them know because the back of the house is bar lingo am i correct yeah so it's a it's industry lingo so um when i started the site i wanted to um kind of show the people who are doing the gritty work in the back of the house and it's restaurant lingo for you know the people that are in, uh, literally in the back of the in the kitchen doing all the hard work mm-hmm. and when i started the site it was i was going to take a camera and go to literally the back of the house and interview these guys and say you know what does it take to make this restaurant tit this yeah. uh is to uh, go to a distillery and ask the master distiller what does it take to make this a unique and successful brand. Um, and when I started it, uh, it's right about when COVID happened. <laughs> so right, right. Uh, I had this shift and my background is in like analytics and um, assessing market industry trends and so forth. So um, I dove into that, started hitting up some people, getting their two cents on um, what goes into the brands, how they make it, where they think the market's going, uh, just via Skype and via Zoom and getting the name out there and, you know, what I think the industry is going to go towards, shift towards, and mm-hmm. people really took to it. You know, they they thought it as valuable insight. And, um, you know, I posted the first article of uh, what I think is going to be like the next fad, not fad, I'd say next segment in our industry, which is uh, CBD oil um, okay. infused into mocktails. And it oh. started out with like 2,000, 3,000 views. And then it got picked up on Mark Brown. Then it went to 20,000 views, 30,000 views. And I'm like, wow, oh. it's crazy. Oh. Yeah, that's crazy, man. I mean, we've communicated for a while and you talked about, you know, you're doing this thing. Um, and, you know, everything looks, it looks great. Like, you're, you're, you know, your, your website is sophisticated. It's, it's, it's rich. It has those, those, you know, those feels or fine. Like it makes you feel like you want to sit down and have a fine glass of whiskey and a nice cigar. Like that's the feel that you're, you're giving off. So I, I like it. And, um, and I see you got a couple of dope interviews that you've been doing too. Yeah. Yeah. So the interviews, those are, those are coming along. Like at first it was difficult, even with some connects I have, like it's, it was difficult to get people in front of you and talk to you. Yeah. Um, but then once the ball started getting rolling, they saw what the content was about and then they saw the website you know, at first, I didn't even think, I didn't even think a website was necessary. Because I'm like, who goes to websites anymore? It's, you know, it's Facebook, it's Insta. Um, but, you know, legitimacy and people who want to read the articles to yeah. full, full extent. Yeah. So it's been working. I mean, um, hopefully, I just start getting out in the street and talking I know, to some man. actual bartenders, man. And It's rough. Man. It's rough right now. We're about to go back into this quarantine thing, too. So it's going to be a minute. Yeah. No, yeah, so- you, I mean, you can't, it, you, everybody's got like a different point of view, but they all come back down to the, the same thing, which is we, what other ways they're out. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, you know, but, but, but let's not, you know, we, I, I tend to drift that way a lot lately because this is what's going on, but let's keep these spirits high. You know what I'm saying? What, what, what you sipping on right now? What you got over there? Okay, so um, a couple of my favorites, uh, McAllen Amber. Okay. Because uh, I have a serious sweet tooth. So when I sit down with a bourbon aficionados, I'm not the best taster. Generally what I like, they they don't. And generally what I don't like, they love. And that's how I've been judging things the last five years. Like, <laughs> if I'm sitting down with people who are selling twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 bottles and, and I'm sipping, I'm like, oh, this is horrendous. I'm like, you guys are going to love this. Right. But uh, this is a, it's actually a liqueur. Um, okay. it, a lot of uh, like sort of um, pecan, amber type notes on it um and uh this is actually my second one uh, <laughs> nice so it's good for an aperitif right before yeah. dinner but then it's good you know sipping along during dinner and then it's good after but they uh they haven't made it in a really long time hey, um so is this something that you would mix in the cocktail the being an aperitif and all you know because it's because it's complexities and the sweetness to it, and the trend that everything want, everybody wants some cast strength. The blending opportunities are endless. Right. You could drop this 
in a traditional old fashion with hundred proof something or another, yeah. and you get the complexities of the cast strength, strong smoke, bang, but then you get the vanilla at the top. Okay. So there's a lot of things you can do with this. Dope, dope. Yeah, yeah I, haven't heard, I haven't heard of that one. I mean, of course, I know McAllen, but I didn't know they made a liqueur. Um, but I don't dive into the scotch world too often, every every now and then. Um, I do enjoy mm-hmm. my scotch or whatnot, but I am what you would call a bourbon aficionado. Like, I am huge on the on the bourbons. And uh, tonight, though, I'm going with a, a midwinter nice dram, um, high west yep. city out of Utah, uh, which is um, yep. a, a, a blend of rice. Uh, it's one of my favorites, man. I, I love this stuff to death. Yeah. Yeah, I've heard, uh, I've heard really good things about it. I actually used to represent the brand uh, okay. a bit in a former uh, job. So I know that stuff is quality. That's quality is going to get. Um, and then I brought this guy out, which is uh, St. George Breaking and Entering. Can okay. No, I don't know that one. So St. George, they're out in Cali. They're the original, original craft distillers. Really? Like before, this, this bottle is from like 2012. Okay. And look how craft it's craft bourbon. Right. It was before the it was before the boom. Right. And I tell the guys over there in St. George all the time. Like I have nothing to do with them. I just know a couple guys over there. I'm just like, kudos to you guys for getting ahead. You know, they might not be, you know, number one in the craft area now, but they had the foresight to put out something that was, you know, almost a decade out. Well, you know, it's usually so, uh, usually folks that do things first and early that don't get the credit they deserve. <laughs> and, yeah, and everyone yeah. else follows behind, right? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, definitely, definitely. That's dope. Yeah. I haven't heard of them. I have to look them up. Um, so, but that, that's, that's, I'm glad you said that, though, because one of the topics you wanted to, you were interested in discussing that I find very interesting is um, the possibility of the bourbon boom bottoming out. What's your perspective on this? Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, everyone's been talking about this bo- possibly bottoming out. I mean, there's, there's whiskey. Um, charts like the S&P 500 online for investing, right? Mm-hmm. And you can follow, you can follow the trends, uh, whiskeystats.org and a couple other, couple other uh, whiskey collector sites, but it's all about hedging your bet a little bit. What I'm scared for is the people that are laying down barrels now and thinking in four years, because you need a minimum age statement of four years to get any type of credibility. Yep. What if it starts to level out in four years and you hedged your bet? Eighty percent of your portfolio on whiskey. So yeah, you were saying um, from a company perspective. You mean as far as the folks actually producing these barrels of, of whiskey? Yeah, you talking about distributors, suppliers, distillers. Uh, I mean the, the the whole process, three tier three tier system. They could be investing all their um, assets and capital into the bourbon game, and say five years from now, bourbon's not it. Right. I mean. What are we, what's the hottest selling thing right now? Seltzer, right? Would you ever believe that? Like a year ago when IPAs and bloggers and we're like, you know, I, I want the strongest IPA and a <laughs> right. coffee scout and all of a sudden now it's like, how many cases of White Claw can I get, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right, people just throwing it back. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't see, I don't see, I don't see the bourbon, um, category busting or extinguishing. I think I think maybe it'll see a dip, as in like somebody will take some of his market share, mm-hmm. right? So like tequila, I wrote um, something about the IWSA category is the fastest growing category in premium spirits year over year for two years over whiskey. I mean it's insane, right? So that so that's one category taking a big chunk out of whiskey right off the top. Right, right. So, um, yeah, I mean, you got to, I don't think the, I don't think it's going to bottom out, but I think there's going to be some people taking some digs at it. What, what has it been? Maybe um, 10, 10, maybe 10 years strong now or so? Yeah. Right? I'll, yeah, just about, just about 10 years. Just about right. 10 years. And, yeah. and there's been a, a couple of threats. I mean, I know you said tequila is doing its thing. Um, there was this, this idea that gin was going to be next. Right, like gin, from, you know, from what I have been seeing, um, and then people thought that when gin didn't really, you know, gin gardens started popping up and yeah. things of nature, and then everyone was saying rum is going to, you know, yes, I heard it too. do what gin didn't accomplish. <laughs> I and, the same thing. 
Right. And so you see some tiki bars and things of that nature. You know, Jack Rose has a tiki bar and mm. uh, Homic, you know, t- uh, TNT at the Har- at uh, Wharf, you know, and, and I love both rum and gin, but, you know, this bourbon thing seems to be staying pretty strong. It's, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, I think uh, I think recently, as of in the last uh, two years or so, a lot of fad chasers have jumped on and that's making it go up a little bit. But I heard the exact same thing that gin and rum, like it's crazy you say that I heard premium gin and premium rum are going to be the next eight categories. I see some rum players make a, a strong push for it, but this wasn't the year to make a push for it. Is that right? <laughs> but, uh, yeah. um, but I heard, and everything. Yeah, I, I heard the same thing. Um, but yeah, um, like three, four years ago on these whiskey pages, it's probably 2,000 people, 3,000 people, something like that. Now it's like 20,000. Crazy. It's like, I can't even keep up. And some of the people like in the pages are just quick, quick, quick and flipping. And like, yeah. you know, I got this one, I got this one, I got this one. I'm like, I'm still trying to taste the first one. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey, you know, and I just, I don't get into that, man. Um, it's just, it's too much. I don't have um, energy enough to spread across to be caught up in the, the hype, the hype train. Um, yeah. Spirits. Um, and it's similar. The whiskey situation is very similar to um, sneakers. Like, there's a hype culture in sneakers. Oh, yeah. And there's a hype culture in whiskey. And I just don't buy into it, man. Um, I get what I get when I want to get it. And if I don't get it, then I just don't get it. You know? Yes. That's how, that's how I'm about kicks. Like yeah. um, the Kyrie's and the Kobe's are the only two shoes I wear ball in. And the Kyrie's are a little tight in the, t- in the front, but they look amazing. Right. The Kobe's, I, Kobe's I've been wearing for ever right. because that's that's my ball and shoe but now it's like you know rest in peace but you can't get a shoe and i'm like i've been buying a shoe for 10 years and now you can't get them yeah now i can't get them it's incredible so it's yeah. crazy it's crazy it's but yeah so, but i do the same thing yeah yeah man so, but you know but you do have a nice collection of to be frank shit i've never heard of oh yeah <laughs> you know what i mean so <laughs> you got something with you there when it comes to, to, to getting some stuff that people have never heard of yeah, I mean, I, I don't like, I don't like the middle shelf that everybody knows about. I mean, yeah. what do you bring to the game? You know what I mean? Like, uh, like these guys, I just picked up. Uh, I found uh, we partnered up. My company that I work for partnered up with them, Ironclad. Okay. They're they're, they're from Virginia. That's why I picked them up. Like Virginia, uh, Newport, uh, Seed to Glass. Really, really good stuff. This is a craft coffee cask. Okay. And they got they got a bunch of different types of uh, unique casks. Um, Packaging is amazing. This is a smaller bottle, mm-hmm. but the, the regular size bottle, um, the front will flip out and show you a picture of the ironclad ship. Oh, dope. Yeah, and it'll give you uh, a little script here from where your barrel came from, dope. what number it is, where and you can track your barrel. I love that. And it's got the yellow wax, the purple wax. I'm a sucker for like a really good dope looking bottle. Like, yeah, yeah. I, I've mentioned that on my show a few times too, man. I love the, one of the things that will draw me to something like there's a nice bottle. If you put that much attention to your bottle, then I'm a little interested in the juice. I absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. Sometimes I just look at the package of a bottle shop. I'm like, holy crap. Like, I got I to check out what that, even if it's crap in the bottle, I want to see what it is. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Sometimes it ends up that way. But sometimes you get yeah. some really good stuff, man. Um, and, you know, and I I love the younger, you know, I, I like my rise younger. Um, but I love some of the younger stuff, too. It's like I don't discriminate. Um, and I don't discriminate if somebody – um source their juice either because blending is a craft you know yeah. whether you want to admit that or not it, it takes a lot to be able to blend a nice whiskey you get a um, a little book or a midwinter nice dram and you know this this is yeah. great stuff it's blended yeah absolutely man and when you say young rye a lot of people like new to the game or new to whiskey they automatically think the older it is the better it is no and i've, I've heard from directly from master distillers um that they're like two years and three years on a ride, that's the magic number. And everyone's like, I don't know, four year. And, and I'm hearing from like, this is from Jim Rutledge at Four Roses, like me talking to him. So he wrote me a note on it. And he told me two years is a number for ride. Mm. I'm like, and the same thing uh, Bill over at Jack Rose said when someone was tasting, one of my colleagues was tasting, he said two years is the number on ride. Right, man. Yeah, you so, know you know, so I mean, every, everyone's palate is different, but right. you know, but um, you know, and I, you know, so but so I can't tell someone, yeah, you know, this is better than that. But I definitely like the younger stuff, and I don't get you get you're getting over um eighteen years 
on a bourbon and I really don't care for it too much because it tastes like I'm drinking a liquefied treat. <laughs> I'm not into that. It's true. I think when you get that deep, it's more about um, almost about investing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I mean, I told, I told like younger cats, it's a good investment vehicle. I mean, if you get like the right whiskey, I mean, if you're taking it seriously, not to drink it, like just to hold yeah. on to it. You can you can you can make some money on it. I mean, I don't have the time or wherewithal to do some do right. that, but there's a lot of people out there that do it. I mean, look at the like the Macallan fifties and that red label Macallan that just came out. It was like 25, 30, 75 years. I'm like, that's crazy. crazy. That's insane, dude. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I would pay, I would pay for it when I was poor. <laughs> I would. Even that, even that would be something, man. Yeah, I mean, maybe not that specifically, but, <laughs> but some, some of the older stuff I paid, you know, for the pappy, and that's how I know I didn't like it, you know, so I, I paid yeah. those one ounce pours, and I was like, no, okay, you know, I, I see here, I'll stick with the Lot B, 12 year, or the 15, um, yeah. but the 2023, I wasn't really a big fan of that stuff, so. Yeah, I, I 100% agree with you. I like Lot B better. I like Lot B the most. It's, it's crazy. It's, crazy. <laughs> yeah. it's just, it's just, it's supply and demand, just like, just with, just like with kicks, like the Jordan ones. You can I, I, you have the stock X app. Yeah, yeah. So you mean you can see it. Like as soon as it starts going up, people like start copying them, and I'm like, crazy. I wanted to rock these. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> so I'm um, sticking into the um the craft brand lane. Um, how do you feel about that? Because they they almost have. It seems like they have a different trajectory than the traditional Kentucky distillery type of thing, like craft. And those bigger boys, they, they're playing two different games. Is, is that accurate? I think I think there's some bigger boys that are doing it the right way, but you can't really – it's like an oxymoron. Like, like how can you be – so they, they fought hard not to put a definition on craft, mm. right? Because if you put – craft distillery is someone who has employees under 2,000 and blah, 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 all the big boys would be out of the game right, right away. Right. So – but thankfully, the consumer has gotten very, very intellectual, and they follow and they read the back of the bottle, like like what happened with Templeton Rye. Like, um, they they're not stupid. They they're looking at the bottle. They're looking at where where the juice is sourced from. Um, so yeah, I mean, the craft, the the true craft guys that are just like twenty four hours a day living it. Yeah. Like, um, I spoke to Marianne Eves. She was uh she's she was the first female master distiller in Kentucky's history. Okay. Um, she is a true craft master distiller, and she's got a mobile lab where she go wherever she goes, like in a RV type thing, so she doesn't miss a day of mixing. That's great. That's, that's like true authenticity and something that you can't copy right. compared to a billion dollar company that's pumping it out like factories. Right. Can't. I mean, that can't be craft, right. no matter how good your juice is. Right. I mean, I mean, you tell me if if you're pumping it out like Amazon versus somebody who's sitting there and tasting each and every barrel. I, I just think the, the, you can't have the one in the same. Yeah, it, no, and I, and I look at I feel the same way. I mean, I, you know, I understand that uh, it's just like, um, you know, you, you go to the grocery store and you see, a, you know, you see a, a loaf of bread and all of a sudden that same brand, they start calling it something else. They, they come out with another loaf of bread. They still have the one that yeah. you used to get. Yeah, this yeah. one is home style, yeah. right? <laughs> So yeah, it's, right. it's like, you know, it's just sort of big boys trying to get a steak in something that's hot and whatnot. Yeah. But for the true craft distilleries, like when I go to Rochester, New York, and I go to a, like a black button distillery, you yeah. know, and, and it's a small distillery, not a lot of employees, and they're pumping out really good juice. Um, you know, my, my thing is, are they playing a different game than a, you know, um, Buffalo Trace type of, you know, yeah. distillery? Like, you know, do they have the same hurdles to jump over, you know, things like that. No, definitely not. Right. I mean, the, the Buffalo, you can, you want to activate an extension or a line extension. It's a stroke of the keyboard. Right. Right. And then black button, it's like, they got to find financiers and so forth. And um, yeah, it's, it's a different game. And those guys, the smaller guys, it lights my night and beyond yeah. in, in, a month or, in a month or two. That's why I think it's important that we support those, those, those types of companies. Absolutely do. Yeah. I agree yeah. with you a thousand percent. Um, so this, 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 uh, uh, this last topic that I have here is something that you mentioned the marketplace before and after COVID. Yeah. So we talked about, you know, generally, you know, the, the trends of whiskey and ribbons and, you know, it's going up and it might flatline a little bit, so on and so forth. But how do you, how do you feel? What's your perspective on COVID and how it really 
affecting the marketplace when it comes to uh, whiskey? Um, I think overall the off-premise has uh, made up a lot for the on-premise like, type sales, but I really feel bad for the the on-premise folk um, because, and I don't think they're getting enough attention from the government to say, hey, look at these people who have dedicated their lives to this craft. And just because they don't have the lobbyists that like airlines do and things of that nature, they're not getting the proper appropriate funds and attention. Yeah, You're talking about millions of people that dedicated their lives to, you know, uh, bartending and wait staff and managers and hospitality and hotels like displaced. So I think pre COVID, it was one thing. And then during COVID, hopefully just 2020, it wiped out a lot of the people who were hanging on, right? Just hanging on. Like they went out. Yeah. I, I think the restaurant, in, the restaurant number for DC, I think is like 30% is going to just not recover, which stinks. Um, oh, man. But the numbers overall, I think, are going to even themselves out mm. just because of how insane off-premise has done. So um, I just hope the reason I brought that up or wanted to talk about that is that somebody somewhere hears something and says, you know, I know there's a lot of suppliers that, you know, have put something in place, funds, you know, 10,000 here, 20,000 there. But that's just a, dr- that's a drop in the bucket for what people need. Right. You know, so I know we, um, w- what's your affiliation with the industry? Um, I mean, it's just this. It's whiskey and kicks, man. I, I've never been a bartender. I've never worked in the industry. Um, so my affiliation is is walking to an establishment and uh, making something to drink, please. And, and uh, okay, so, you know what I'm so I'm just, I just, I just got into this because of my love of um, you know. Once I started, once I started finding out that there's more to this than uh, there's more to rum than um, whatever whatever brand you could think you know you could think of like that everyone drinks, right? Uh, exactly. Like, Captain Morgan, right? Yeah. Well, you know, here's a Captain Morgan. Well, let me look. Well, what, what is this? And and yeah. it was like, well, Ronza Kappa, even though Ronza Kappa has a bad name in the industry, but that's what happened. That's what happened. It was like, what is this Ronza Kappa? And I've yeah. never heard of this. I, I didn't even know that there was more depth to this thing. And then I cracked it open and drank it and was like, wow, this is really good. Like, I can just drink this without Coke. Yeah. And that started, my, that started my journey, dude. And then I realized that there was more and more and more and more. And then I just, you know. The cocktail, the craft, the craft cocktail industry just you know, yeah. back rolls, and that was the end of it. It was this time. Yeah. Ago. So that's, I mean, that's the best place to come from because that's passion. It's yeah. straight passion. Yeah. You, you can force yourself into it. Um, it's not a means of, you know, making money. And I always tell, I mean, I tell my, I tell my nephews, I tell my kids, I tell anybody that's young, or anybody who's pursuing anything. I say, oh, I always say, you pursue something that you love, and the money will follow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, if you do the opposite, it's just never going to work out. It's just going to yeah. take you longer to figure it out. Yep. So yeah, so I that's I a lot of respect there for how you're going about going about doing that. So I yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so what made you ask that? No, I'm just curious okay. because you're so hardcore into the game. I'm thinking maybe you bartended a jack or, or you you know uh, some sort of affiliation that, that I'm not just yeah. not aware of. The more, the more I talk to you guys, I mean, plus you're, in, you know, you're an interviewer, na- you know, naturally. So it's, you're, you're bound to ask me a couple of questions, right? Yeah. But the more, the more I get out here and speak with guys like, like you, um, because you are a bartender by trade, also, right? No, no, I'm not a bartender. I work in the industry, so I, I've worked for suppliers, I've worked for distributors. Okay. Uh, yeah. So I've seen. And I've done the, the finance side, I've done the management side, and I've done the sales and the sales side. So, okay, dope, dope. But but you know, I talk to people still, you still fit into it. Like people with the knowledge, you know what I'm saying? The more I talk to folks, whatever, the more I learn and the more I fall in love with it. So um it is all about the passion and you know, the the money stuff. It it may come, it may not, it's not killing me. So I'm just gonna keep pushing. Yeah, yeah. That's why that's why I started the back of the house, is because I just genuinely curious what happens. And I wanted to give some, shed some light on to the people who are at the back of the house doing a lot of this work. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to give them a voice, right? And then, you know, with the analytics background, I combine it, put some foresight into it, start connecting people. Um, and not to get anything out of it, just connect them and see what happens. You connect with another person, with another person, you just have fun with it. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. Wait, look, look, you can cover the back of the house. I cover the front of the house. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what's up. That's what's up. You know what I'm saying? Do you, um, do you collect any any bottles, or you drink, or you crack everything you you? I crack, I crack everything I buy. Yeah, I buy I buy it to sip. Um, I don't care, you know, how much the bottle costs me or whatever. If I if I buy it, it's something that I want to taste. Yeah, and share and share. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. 
I have I have a bunch of bottles. Um, uh, I mean, I have a, a gang of bottles here, and um, you know, and, and that's pretty much it, man. How, how about you? You you collect stuff that you don't open up? Uh, there's a term for it in the sneaker world. I know it is like one cop, one cop, one to flop, or some. Oh yeah, uh, put one on ice, I guess. Uh, yeah. yeah. So like, I buy one for myself to drink, and then I hold I hold the other one to fund to get another one. That type of thing. That's what I do with shoes, at least. I can do like, it. Like um, like I got those those uh, Kyrie Bruce Lee's the yellow joints with the red scratches on them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I caught two of those. So I got one. I'm actually gonna ball on them. And I balled them, and then like the other one. Just held there, and now they're like, I got it for like a buck fifty. No, like, like they're like eight hundred bucks. That's a nice flip. So now the Kobe Bruce Lee's are coming out next month, so I'm gonna use that to get that. So it is authenticity. I'm not trying to make money off of it. I just want to fuel me being able to get my next pair of kicks. I can dig it. Yeah, yeah. Dig it. I'm not mad at yeah. that. I'm not. I'm not mad at that, and I'm not mad at people out there flipping. It's just not. You know, what I'm saying it's not. It's not for me. Um. You know, I am a little bit mad at the people with the bots and stuff. The bots get on my nerve a little bit, you know. The, the oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They get on my nerve a little bit, but. Yeah, that's a pain. That's, a, that's another level. It's like, it's, it takes out all the people that really want to get the stuff, like, for purity. Yeah, hey, man. You know what I'm saying? Make sneakers available again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's crazy out here. Yeah, it is. It is nuts. Because especially with alcohol, at least you're 21 and up. With the kicks, you got kids that are millionaires. Yeah, yep. I mean, they are bots on a crack. I mean, yep. they got a million things going, and then they got the ROI going, and then I'm like, oh man, yeah, that, try. That, yeah, yeah, it's like don't even try. Um, yeah. uh, you know, last time I went to sneaker con, I mean, I'm seeing little kids walking, care, pulling um, flat, like little flatbeds with everything, Travis multiple Travis Scott, all, all the things that you can't get. And their parents just walking next to them. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause they're going to go in there and flip all these and make all this money. So that's exactly what's happening. You know, but I guess that's just through connects and bots. Yeah. Yeah. I guess so. Um, but you know, I just don't, you know, I don't have a desire. I don't, I don't keep, I don't hold on to a whole bunch of sneakers. Um, yeah. I have, uh, you know, I have maybe 56, I probably have like 60, 65 pair, but yeah. which is a lot for some people, but yeah. you know what I'm saying? In, in this world, it's not really a lot. Yeah, yeah, I don't wear my sneakers after a couple of years. I I donate them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or I have a couple sentimental pair, and and I keep those. But otherwise, I'll just I'll donate because there's somebody out there that needs these sneakers and it's material at the end of the day. Yeah, I feel you on that. Man. I, got I have a couple of regrets. Yeah. Oh yeah. A couple of joints I donated. I was like, damn, I should have kept those. But yeah, <laughs> yeah there's a couple of those. There's yeah. A couple of them. But back in the house, though, man, where do you really want to go with it? I just you know, while we end up wrapping up here in a couple minutes, I just want people to really dial in to the experience that they will get by visiting your website, thebackofthehouse.com. So you're gonna get, you're gonna get analytics. You're gonna get what's happening in the market. You're gonna get new faces. You can get old faces. You're gonna understand where the market's at. You're gonna discover new ways to get things. You're gonna find out about industries and trends that you don't know about. You're gonna find out about new things that you've never heard of that are freaking amazing. Like uh, you might, like this guy right here, this is a bitter by a company. Yeah. So it's called Chaiwala. So it's like in India, uh, every household has someone that gives them tea. And that, that person's called a Chaiwala. So this, if you ever drank Indian tea, this is a bitter. Oh, my God. It tastes yeah. <laughs> it's ridiculous. The dude on uh, P Street in DuPont has it. But this is the type of stuff that you're going to find on my site, stuff that you're not going to be able to find anywhere else. Yeah. And, I mean, you're not going to be able to buy it, but I'm going to tell you, this is what's going on. And then you're going to catch dope interviews with like, like the one I just did with Fawn Weaver. Yeah. Um, and she's giving insight on business, like how you can go about your business, help your business. But then at the same time, talking about brands, talking yeah. about whiskey, talking about the game, talk about, you know, liquid the lips and you know, what our industry is all about. And then new stuff that's coming around the corner. Like I firmly believe that mocktails with a little bit of CBD tincture in, inside of it next year is going to be the biggest drink in the country. That's wild, man. right? Yeah, so you're gonna find some wild stuff. You're not gonna just find me and another person drinking, sipping. I smell leather on this. I smell. <laughs> uh, no. You're gonna find some wild stuff on my site, and you're gonna find some authenticity. Yeah, real stuff with real people, real, real kind of cats giving you the insight that you're not gonna be able to find, you know, by yourself. That's dope. That's dope. And how about it on social media, man? How can people find you? Um, so Instagram is Sunny Sing DC. Um, I didn't change it to Bagger House because I want to let people know it's still me. 
and that's the authenticity thing too because i'm not trying to build something to sell i want people to know it's me yeah. so instagram is sunny sing dc linkedin is sunny sing dc uh facebook it is the back of the house i just haven't got, I haven't got to that point <laughs> yeah 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 you've been busy dude you've been busy i've been paying yeah. attention yeah it's like it's crazy um but i got a couple of interviews coming down the pipeline that i think it'll blow your mind man so oh, man um all these celebrities partnering up with brands and i reached out to a couple of them they're up for it so that's i'm like nice. okay let's that's do it that's dope <laughs> That's dope. That's a beautiful thing, man. Hey, you know, closed mouths don't get fed. That's what they say, right? Just, just speak up. Yeah. You'd be surprised yeah. if you say, hey, let's do it. You know? Yeah, and I'll say one thing, one, one more thing. If you connect with me, and I'm not just talking about follow, I'm talking about if you connect with me on Instagram, Twitter, whatever, I will, I will interact with you and help you in whatever capacity you are doing. And, and I will sharpen your mind, and I will help, and I would want you to sharpen my mind as well. And I would want to help you, and I would want you to help me. And, and I only want to do that because it's the right thing to do. Dope. And I think that's the way that life is supposed to be led. That's helping dope. others and just stop living in a pocket. Get out there and talk to people, yep. help them and let them help you and talk about new stuff that you don't know about. And um, the real truths of humanity and people, like you see in the next six to eight months, a, a wave of people speaking at a deeper level, like, um, a year ago, two years ago, it was taboo to talk about mental health disability, right? Completely different. Now, it's, it's different now, right? Yep. So, like, I know that I, I talked to some people who had that problem. I didn't know them. I wanted to help them. That's what you're going to get when you talk to me. No but doubt. I'm going to try to help you as much as I humanly possibly can. And you're going to learn a lot about alcohol in the, in, in, in the interim. That's dope, man. That's a, that's a good look, man. I hope people pay attention to that and uh, try to lead their lives in a very similar fashion. Um, so if, if any of you guys, you know, and you include have seen the content that I put out, that, that's that been a common theme with a lot of my guests. Like, you know, the, the days of trying to, um, you know, I don't want to open up to this person because I don't yeah. want to, that, those days are gone. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. You're losing if you're thinking that way. So I, I like that, dude. I appreciate that. And I appreciate your time, man. Um, yeah, absolutely. You know, absolutely. Absolutely. I appreciate you doing the show, and I'm um, glad we finally linked up. <laughs> We've been talking for a while. Um, yeah, it's, it's been, you saw how crazy it is, man. I can't even get a picture of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you look, dude, I know, you know, everything, I tell people all the time, things happen when they're supposed to, right? So, yeah. time is right. So, now, right now, the time is right, and um, and, and I'm sure that we'll collaborate in the future in, in another capacity, uh, and I'm looking forward oh, to yeah. it. Oh, yeah. And, yeah, then, and also, you sit down and have a drink, too. Yeah, Absolutely. That, that sounds great, bro. That sounds oh, yeah, great. man. Stay, stay good, man, and, and keep pushing, brother. You know what I'm saying? And I'll see you out there, man. Hopefully, when this thing uh, becomes whatever it's going to become, we'll be out, back out there in D.C. Some of our favorite places are going to be gone, but um, hopefully we'll be able to build some new favorite places and um, some new memories. Yeah, absolutely. Tell them, man. Here, bro.